Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country. With the majesty of Victoria Falls, the lush countryside, and the beauty of Shona sculpture, the former British colony of Rhodesia is truly awe-inspiring. The 10 million people make less than $7 per month if they can find work at all. Food is scarce. Even worse, UNICEF estimates that more than 2 million people in Zimbabwe have HIV and AIDS. At least 1.1 million children have been orphaned by the disease. This is the story of what happened when Dr. Robert Scott of Allen Temple Baptist Church invited his brothers and sisters from Lafayette Arenda Presbyterian Church to join his team. Within the heartbreak, there is hope. There is hope at the AIDS Services Clinic in Harare, Zimbabwe's capital. Though many people have traveled two days by bus and even slept on the ground overnight, our team was greeted with utter joy. Our team of doctors and medical students and volunteers from the U.S. and Zimbabwe saw more than 150 HIV patients in less than eight hours. Most of them received antiretroviral medication to help them live with HIV. And many had basic needs, such as underwear, that your generosity helped me. From the city, we headed to the rural community of Mutoko to Mother of Peace Orphanage. When Dr. Scott first visited Mother of Peace in 2000, it was essentially a hospice for children who had lost their parents to AIDS and were themselves dying of the disease. He was profoundly moved by the cemetery with more than 80 children. With the medicine and leadership of Jean Cornick, Mama Jean, only one child has died in the last two years. The LOPC team had an opportunity to experience the Mother of Peace community that is becoming more self-sufficient with the addition of a bakery, a dairy, and a farm. We worked primarily at the medical clinic, where children from Mother of Peace and others from around the country are treated for HIV. Many traveled more than 200 miles. Some brought relatives in wheelbarrows. Listen to the stories from some of those who were there. Dr. Scott and his team is a, a beacon of hope for these people because if they're able to see him and get his retroviral drugs, uh, then um, they have every reason to expect a life expectancy like ours, maybe less minus a year. So I think the thing that I, I came back with was first that um, I, I tried hard to work like a beaver at whatever was required of me, but I got so much more out of it, and they were such the people that we were in touch with, the patients, every one of them. They had such a, they were so joyful that we were there, they were so thankful, they were so gracious, and they just were so appreciative of everything that we did that I think that going there really, really made a difference. Send 
I remember going into the nursery and there was that three month old baby in the crib. His mother had just died. So there's a child there who doesn't even know the mother is dead. It's an orphan, which is the sad part. But then the good part is that she's a mother of peace and uh, she's going to be taken care of. And so there's hope for the kid. And that was true of all the, the kids there uh, who ran to the bus and what have you. Some of them sick with HIV. Um, but they were being taken care of. And that made me feel good. What struck me is it, it has stayed with me literally every day since we came back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think about it all the time. I think about it in my practice. Uh, and, well, no, I mean in a very good way. I mean, in, and uh, of course the uh, I follow with a, a different sort of interest the. Election. I, I mean, it, it really uh, part of the world. It probably I might have paid passing interest. In, I'm now quite passionate about. Uh, I the I I have a little digital picture frame in my office now, and I it scrolls through the pictures of Zimbabwe, and, and it just I'm reminded of of the people we met, of the uh, faces of the the people and, and to know the, the stories of the people that Bob has helped that were on death's door uh, that are now helping out in the, in the clinic and seeing their, 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 uh, the joy in their faces as reflected in these pictures. things that stuck with me and I think that partly because it will affect my feeling about all of the mission trips is Flora asked me um, with a, a degree of hostility, why are you here? And I said, well I came here as a tourist and I fell in love with the country and the people I met and I thought maybe I could, um, you know, help in some little way. And she said, you mean you don't pity us? I said, no, I don't pity you. Mm -hmm. I really wow. care about you. And I just hope that, that I can uh, do something to help just one person or two people. And she was just absolutely delighted with the answer. And I mean, I was being honest. I wasn't trying to give her an answer that, mm -hmm. that she wanted. And she, she came over and hugged me and said, I feel so good about that now. One of the things that was probably most striking to me and um, really most heartening was just to see that you know, as you're surrounded by these kids and, and you see them going to class and you see them playing on the field, you're just reminded that you know they're kids. Yeah, they're just kids. I mean, kids. just and, and there's that sort of um, you know universal similarity, and and um, I, I I really found that very heartening. That um, you know going into it, I sort of thought, well, gosh, what you know what difficult circumstances and how awful it must be for some of these children and. And, and, and certainly they are difficult circumstances, but, you know, I would guess that most of the time they're just sort of preoccupied with being kids. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you get the strong sense that they're well taken care of there. And the work that they're doing at the orphanage is, is amazing work. Um, and those kids are very clearly cared for and loved. The kids are cared for. And thanks to the LOPC contribution, Dr. Scott was able to take on more than 100 new patients. And this is a lifelong commitment and you are all a part of it. And the mission continues. You don't have to embark on the 30 hour, 11,000 mile journey to make a difference. More than 200 children, parents, and grandparents recently gathered to assemble care kits and note cards for the children in Zimbabwe right here at LOPC. You can help by gathering food such as dried beans or fish. You can join us for quarterly pill packing parties to prepare medicine for the clinics. And of course, you can pray for more hope to emerge from the heartbreak. The LOPC and Allen Temple teams feel strongly that Zimbabwe is a place where Jesus would be now, 
and where he calls us to continue to serve him. Thank you.